This is a meta project. It's a project about engineering. It's new, so we're going through the engineering process as we are, you know, doing the show itself. And then within the show about engineering, we are going through the engineering process of designing a escape room that will then be the finale that also has the theme of, you know what, engineering. This is the Discovery Files podcast from the U.S. National Science Foundation. I'm Nate Potker. Engineering is critical in a modern society, from building bridges and homes to designing computers, cell phones, and life-saving medical devices. Breakthroughs in engineering address national challenges and bring about new opportunities in areas such as smart manufacturing, resilient infrastructure, and sustainable energy systems. Education in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, or STEM, is how we prepare the next generation for joining the STEM workforce and being well-informed citizens. We're joined by Nehemiah Mabry, a structural engineer and host of the NSF-supported program Building Stuff with Nova, an interactive program live-streamed Monday through Friday and engaging its audience through engineering games, news, and interviews, culminating with an in-person four-day escape room experience. Dr. Nee, thank you so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. I appreciate this opportunity. Can you talk a little bit about your experience joining up with Nova for this new show? Absolutely. You know, being a host, I think there's a lot happening internally, right? There's the content and the information that you want to get through. There's sort of the uncertainty of what may happen because this is a right. live show. Nate, this is a live show. People are saying things in the chat. Um, not only are people kind of like doing things on the spot, but you got technical things that happen. You find out that the mic is off. You find out yep. that, you know, an image isn't pulled right. Like there is the need for improvisation. You know, being able to flex and move. And, man, I feel like this particular project just kind of blends, you know, all of, you know, who I am together. So that's why I'm so excited about it. Did you grow up with PBS and Nova? Absolutely. Without a doubt. So my my family didn't have cable television. If anybody grew up around my era, this is pre-video on demand. This is pre-streaming. And you only got the channels that either your antenna could pick up, pick up or you were fortunate enough to have, you know, cable television, which brought, you know, a plethora of channels. And that being said, us not having cable meant that I only had sort of the major networks and public television. PBS, yep. man. So I was indeed a PBS kid. I remember watching tons of documentaries that would come on towards the evening time when we can get the ten antenna just right um, from Nova and other brands under the, the PBS banner. And that really inspired me. That really inspired me not only to learn more about science and engineering in the world around me, but also it inspired me um, in regards to the different mediums and creative methods mm -hmm. that information can be communicated. Absolutely. Like I'm right there with you with being a PBS kid in that same exact way. Yeah. Um, moving into your show a little bit, can you give us like an overview of what it is for people that don't know yet? Yes. Building Stuff with Nova is a daily live stream hosted primarily on the platform Twitch. Many people know Twitch for gaming and other live streaming content. Um, but we occasionally also are able to multicast or multi-stream to YouTube, uh, Facebook, TikTok, and other places. But predominantly on Twitch, and we like to refer to it as your virtual makerspace, Nate, your, your ideation laboratory, you know, your mastermind, the place where people who are interested in engineering can come and we can build together. And by building, I mean that in a number of ways. Obviously, the name is Building Stuff with Nova. That's sort of the way that we um, suggest engineering taking place. But myself being a structural engineer, we have the opportunity to game, play several games that are of engineering themes. Started off with like bridge building games. We've done some other industrial engineering type games. We've done some aerospace space games, right? Um, we have the opportunity to actually build things in real life. Matter of fact, for those who see the video version of this can see maybe behind me, there's like a, uh, a trebuchet we built the other day, <laughs> which was really cool. Went down to the uh, you know, home supply store and got wood and screws and a whole nine and did that live on stream. We've had the opportunity to meet with awesome, phenomenal scientists and engineers. Uh, we even go on virtual field trips and have been able to attend and walk through the plasma science and fusion fusion center at MIT, mm -hmm. uh, the constructive facilities laboratory at North Carolina State University and really see some things in person. And the cool thing about it, again, is that it is live. So we're not talking about something that's just one way, highly polished, 
you know, you kind of enjoy it. Maybe you'll tweet out afterwards, but we're talking about in the middle of it, people can ask questions. People can vote in polls that we put on the screen. People can even um, suggest we go a different route and vote on what they want to see next. So it's, it's been really fun every day, every weekday rather um, on, on Twitch. I know you've had, uh, you, you mentioned the scientists and engineers and astrophysicists and some of the other people that have been involved there. Can yeah. you tell us a little bit about what kind of guests you've had? We had uh, a guest by the name of Melissa, who was a professor at Columbia University, does a lot of work in um, climate change and climate climate sustainability. Um, it, mechanical engineer by, uh, I think mechanical engineering, I believe, is one of her uh technical trainings, but we've had her on. We were able to sort of break down the carbon footprint of your cup of coffee by deconstructing a coffee maker and things of that nature. Uh, we've had, uh, you know, Akeem Olusheyi, who is a phenomenal astrophysicist that's come on. One of my favorites, I'll say, was uh, Dr. Lonnie Johnson. He is famed for being the inventor of the super soaker water yeah. squirt gun. And uh, he took this into his lab that he's been able to do and invent a number of things, making phenomenal strides nowadays in the area of energy. And so um, that was just a treat to me because I was a kid who looked up to him, who owned several of the toys he invented and even uh, read a lot of his books during yep. during uh, history, Black History Month and things of that nature. So thinking about the Twitch platform and kind of meeting people where they are connecting with younger audiences, like I think of Twitch as a place probably most famous for gaming kind of things going on. Um, right. How has your audience been there? How have people been reacting in real time? Like you have a real unique opportunity to build a community there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, being a part of NSF, of course, research is a, is a large component of what we do. And so while there may be certain um, parameters, for instance, in the ages that are being studied, right? Being like, okay, over 18 and things of that nature, we have seen really a resonance across the board, you know, mm -hmm. from grade school students to retirees. And I, I mean this literally. I've had people who um, have heard about us being on Twitch and that alone just catches the, the minds of, uh, you know, middle schoolers who recently I was speaking with. They said, oh, you're going to be playing Minecraft. Yeah, we're going to be building Minecraft. Oh, you're on Twitch. You play this game called Subnautica. Yeah, they, they're just really loving it. And mm -hmm. what's so cool about it is that at different times throughout the stream, we're able to pause and break down some of the technical principles behind the games we're playing. I have this thing I call explainer cam, which is basically just a document cam right in front of me where I'm able to pull out a small dry erase board and explain sort of the, the principles, engineering principles about some of the games that we're playing. Um, and then also, again, I know for a fact that multiple individuals who are retired, right, and know things about sort of the early days of computers, they're very active in the chat and putting in co information when we're talking about different <laughs> coding languages and programming languages. And so, you know, we have all those those broad, that broad spectrum of individuals, of course, people there in the center that are, you know, more advanced than me in a lot of the things that we're doing, being that I have a certain area of expertise. And so it's been great. And it's been also just, again, speaking to the younger age group, it's been great to get younger audiences in the room, essentially virtual room with individuals who have decades of experience. Mm -hmm. And so there's sort of a incidental collision that takes place there. And this education that takes place across generations just by, again, putting things out there and not, you know, over formalizing the process, you know. Right. Having fun along the way. Having fun along the way. Indeed. So speaking of along the way, you're you're building towards an in-person event at the end of this. And part of the plot line of the show is kind of the steps along the way a little bit. Yes. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, Nate, this is the but wait, there's more part of the project. <laughs> you know what I mean? As if it wasn't already cool enough. One of the things that just really brings it home is the fact that we are culminating and a finale that will be a four day process of live streaming and escape room. So we are building an escape room along with some partners out of Boston, Trapology Boston. Obviously, Nova is involved. It will be hosted right there at GBA Studios, where we will be bringing individuals across the, the virtual community um, of different different places. And even um, we have an application out for people who have just been watching that they can apply. Uh, but ultimately, we're going to bring together a team of people who will go through the process of solving engineering 
themed challenges in our four day engineering escape game um, in order to, here's the theme, save the world from the hazards and dangers of Y3K. <laughs> right. So this is our whole scenario and narrative that the team has come up with where, you know, by the year three, Y3K, we had we would have become very dependent upon a benevolent AI, just looking at how much has happened now. And so therefore, a lot of the basics and understandings of engineering principles, we've sort of gotten lazy. And so now our infrastructure, you know, both on Earth and in space depends heavily on it. But we realize that there is a need to refresh and retrain the algorithm or we will lose all of our advancement. So <laughs> that's the theme and narrative, which is so cool. And what we've done over several streams on a weekly basis, we started out with really ideating and brainstorming with people <laughs> in the chat, people telling us ideas. Oh, here's what you could do with aerospace. Here's what you could do with some chemical engineering. Here's what you can do with some electric circuit type puzzles. And we've kind of compiled all this and over time sifted through with the help of our partners, um, things that would really flow in mm -hmm. the in the escape room that moved from one day to the next and ultimately having a finale. And we've designed it in a way that not only will we be watching the people in person go through it, but there'll be parts of the puzzles that depend on the virtual audience chat participating in. And so this is something that um, it's unlike anything I've ever been a part of. But I can tell you that 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 is what takes it up a notch when it comes to the innovative um, aspects of this this project. Very cool. And I understand after the Twitch series ends, there's a, going to be a three-part documentary also on PBS. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is what Nova, you know, has done at levels of excellence for for decades, right? 50 yeah. years to be exact. And that is making high quality, highly stimulating and educational documentary series. Um, it's gonna be a three part under the same name, Building Stuff. And there's gonna be launch in successive weeks. So we're concluding, we're doing our escape room, you know, the finale of it at the end of October. But throughout the, the month of November, we're gonna be, every month, PBS is gonna have a, um, not every month, but at three different weeks throughout November, there's going to be three different one hour long documentary series under the theme building stuff. Uh, the first one is going to be boosted, going over some some pretty cool things that engineers are building um, today. Currently, um, the following week is going to be another one under the theme. Reach it again, continuing on with that idea of specials, examining the innovative process. And then the following week it's going to be change it. And so they've done a number of things. I've been able to be one of the individuals uh, who, who contribute to some of the stories there on the documentary. But again, this is what Nova does well. And I can I can say with confidence, it's another uh, another series that you don't want to miss from them. Very cool. So while you're here, I wanted to take advantage of your engineering background and talk to you a little bit about modern materials and techniques that are being used. Mm hmm and just kind of throw them at you and see what you think about them. Okay, okay. So, so one of the interesting things that I've seen a little bit of is 3D printing with structures at this point, like you could do a, a house or a building. Yeah. So what do you think about this? Man, I, I think <laughs> it's amazing, right? So 3D printing, um, I, you know, there are a number of ways that it's been brought into construction. One of the ways is um, concrete, right? They have these machines that are able to, you know, bit out concrete and now lay it in a nice, very uh, complex shape at times. So I think it speeds things up for one. Number two, as I just said, complex shapes. It allows it to be laid in a way that ordinarily you would have to create like a complex form, mm -hmm. right? But now when you have this nozzle, I think you have the ability to sort of do things in different angles and different placements of it. Um, that make really, you know, 3D printing of buildings, of structures, if you will, a really an interesting, interesting proposition. Now, that's something that just came to me thinking yeah. about this. Do you think there's regional challenges with this technology? Like I was thinking about kind of storms in Florida, say, okay. and how like I don't know much about what they're putting inside of the 3D printing buildings. Yeah. like. Yeah. Well, no, no. So when it comes to concrete in general, there's going to be environmental factors, right? Right. Um, which if it's humid versus if it's less humid, right? You want to make sure the temperature is high versus temperature is low, because there's it's a really um, it's a, it's a chemical process that's taking place whenever the concrete goes from wet to dry as it gets hardened, 
right? And that process can be either aided or detracted from by the environmental factors. So again, sometimes when it's actually going through this process, it gets really hot. If it gets too hot, it can start cracking. And so sometimes you want to be able to put water on it, let it cool down. Um, you know, the other way around, if it's not enough water, sometimes there isn't the right ratios and, and you don't have the same type of chemical thing taking place. So I would say that at least off the bat, I can think of things that already exist that we have to compensate for. Mm. Um, but perhaps there are some other things um, within those uh, 3D, 3D printing machines that will be affected as well. All right. The, the last one in this kind of area here thinking about ai like mm. it's the biggest topic on everybody's mind yeah, yeah and I, th yeah. I think in the in your end of the world it's probably more in planning i'm thinking how are you seeing ai being used a lot I, well where am i seeing and where i see it can be used maybe yeah. two different things so yes planning um researching that's, that's some of the things i'm seeing but there's still so many areas that uh ai is on the way to impacting, right? <laughs> if you want to think about it, a lot of the things that we design are an optimization puzzle, right? Mm -hmm. Like how do you make it big enough that it's strong enough, but not too big that it takes away too much space? Um, how do you make sure that is, you know, is thick enough so that it actually has the qualities that you're looking for, but not too thick to add too much weight? You know what I mean? Like there's different things. And so we're, we're a lot of times as engineers, we're tweaking designs, moving this here when this pops out like a big Rubik's cube in some ways. But AI has the opportunity to bring down the time and, and process a lot of options for you at a much quicker pace than, you know, we're probably accustomed to. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that AI does stand promise and there are ways that it has already been brought into sort of the software, you know, right. where traditionally, and again, talking structural engineering, you know, you could have an engineer that runs the numbers, make sure the analysis is good, says what it needs to be. And then someone else who goes and draws it. And then sometimes the way you draw it doesn't always make sense when you start seeing the parameters and then let alone when you get out into the construction field. And now you're realizing that that line actually takes up a half an inch while you just drew it as a line on the paper. Like it, it's, there are different things, but AI has the ability to be integrated in that process and really streamline considerations that perhaps could be overlooked or um, more likely to be uh, not acknowledged at times. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I see a lot of, uh, a lot of promise. And I think that the, here's what I think it opens up. Nate, I think it opens up, the potential for a greater creativity at the end of the day and B um, it places a higher value on leadership, right? Mm -hmm. And leadership being able to still have a vision that we collectively, you and your AI tools, you and your AI tools, me and my AI tools are still kind of ultimately moving towards in right. a way that is um, aligned and ultimately beneficial for the health and safety of the public. Absolutely. So, so the, the last question I want to ask you today is circling back to building stuff with Nova yeah. and asking you about what about the show is the most exciting for you personally? Oh, see, it is a lot of that's a tough question because there's a lot of exciting things, because even though you heard me so excited about it before we even got to the escape room, um, it, it, I'll say it this way. This is a meta project. It's a mm -hmm. project about engineering. Is new, so we're going through the engineering process as we are, you know, doing the show itself. And then within the show about engineering, we are going through the engineering process of designing an escape room that will then be the finale that also has the theme of, you know what, engineering. So it's like, it's like <laughs> multiple layers of engineering. So when I just think about how it's woven in throughout the entire project, both literally, figuratively, um, I just can't help but get enthusiastic about it. And I've just had a blast, you know, flexing those improv muscles. Special thanks to Nehemiah Mabry. For the Discovery Files, I'm Nate Potker. Please subscribe wherever you get podcasts. And if you like our program, share with a friend and consider leaving a review. Discover how the U.S. National Science Foundation is advancing research at NSF.gov.